Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Athlestzephon, Scorch Fountain. Presently, it is the first of granite in the year 1166, early spring, of our third year, and we are still under siege, or rather, should I say, over siege. Yes, we still have the little matter of the undead infestation here, but they are locked safely underground, so it's no worries at all. The dwarves up on the surface are already back to work, quite happily too, mind you. Oh, and already we have some activity here. Fath, the Fields Dwarf, has been taken by a strange mood, and looks to have claimed a Crafts Dwarf workshop, and does not appear to have what they need for this artifact. Well, we're going to have to get that sorted out. Looks like they need some stone blocks, cut gems, and bones. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Just has to come up here and make some facilities first. A butcher. And then we just need someone to come down here, grab one of our stray reindeer bulls, and, well, get their bones out of them. Just like that. Easy enough, really. There we go, Fath is continuing along now. No problems whatsoever. Just like we like it. Good luck, Fath. Hoping it's a good artifact to start out a great year. And there we have it. Fath Uzal Ostuk, the field's dwarf, has created Limar Laluth, a reindeer bone battle axe. She claims as a family heirloom. Let's have a look at that. Its name translates to Wealth's Flooded, and it's worth 67,000. Not too bad. I'm really hoping Wealth Flooded describes our coming year. We could really use a good one. This is a reindeer bone battle axe. All craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with cushioned indigo tourmaline cabochons and decorated with reindeer bone. This object menaces with spikes of marble and indigo tourmaline. An absolutely stunning piece when you get down to it. A decorative piece, of course. It's just made out of bone. It wouldn't be of too much use in combat, maybe a little bit, but we're not going to use it. We'll just put it on display somewhere, and that's just going to be fine. It deserves a prestigious place here in Scorch Fountain. Thank you very much for making it, Faf. Absolutely masterful. And now that we got that whole thing sorted out, we can get down to business. Dwarves, we still have a lot of work to do, and those migrants should start arriving any second now, which is going to give us a lot of trouble, quite frankly. We're already trying to get a bunch of furniture made for the bedrooms down below. The idea is to have the dwarves living in the anvil currently stay there while all the new migrants will be moving down below. Which, yeah, seems a little bit unfair, but I figure the dwarves already in the anvil are kind of used to their rooms. They won't mind so much when you get down to it. If you have a look down here, you can see all of our horn beetles. All of those young ones from before have grown into adults at this point, and most of them have now laid eggs, which I think are about to hatch. Using a bit of a strange tactic here, uh, where you set up the pasture and then kind of... Eh, it, it's hard to explain. I'll explain it later on. Don't worry about it. But I think it should work. I'll let you know if we're successful. Up over this way here at the eastern edge of the forge, where our former magma forge area used to be, you can see they're all gone now. We actually moved this all. Simply because being locked in the anvil before um, really didn't affect us so much. It's actually kind of nice to be locked away for a while. And so I figured we should try to get this thing moved down safely into the anvil. And so here you have it, a crude little forage area just kind of carved out right here. Gonna get the job done, certainly. Not too bad, and so we are producing a large amount of metal right now. It's working out pretty great. And while we're on the subject of the forge, I'd like to point out this dwarf here, Ilral. Our armorer. She came in one of those first migrant waves, of course. She is quite a dependable dwarf. I know we haven't seen much of her, but she's very incredibly useful. A damn fine smith, really carrying her baby with her. She had a baby last episode that I did not mention. Not to any length anyways. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize it. She's a legendary armorsmith. I had her making some copper armor earlier, and she was pumping out masterworks shockingly frequently. I guess that explains why. Yeah, I'm a big fan of her. In the fortress currently, she has her husband, a woods dwarf, her son, the baby, Phycod, and her friend, Tun, Beetlebane. Yeah, she's buddies with Beetlebane which is pretty good to see. Just figured I'd take a second to point her out. One of my favorites for sure. She's currently making some silver statues for the Farmer's Guild. We still have to nice that thing up a bit. Keep it up, Ilral. You're doing fine work here. Back over here towards the Farmer's Guild, you can see the new hatchlings have hatched. Wonderful. A whole bunch of them. Oh yeah, triplets have hatched. Triplets have hatched. A boy have hatched. A girl have hatched. <laughs> Dwarven grammar. Gotta love it. Currently up to 24 beetles. Very good. 
I can't wait till we get some nice accommodations for them. Gonna be necessary coming up, I think. Gotta make sure they have enough food. Very important. Over here we have a cool little thing. Dodok. Beetle Baby. Off on her own currently. Just sitting in the corner, playing make-believe. What a good kid. She's just one year old now. She'll be able to work when she's 12. So yeah, gonna take a bit. Take care of yourself, Beetle Baby. It's a dangerous world out there. Yeah, would you look at that? It's already the first of Hematite early summer. Man, time is flying. Boy, oh boy, I'll tell you what. Things do not slow down around here, that is for sure. We have another strange mood dwarf. This time it's a clothier, which is a little dicey. I'm pretty sure we're not going to have what they need. Well, let's give it a go. Looks like she needs leather and cloth. Well, it's a bit hard to say what kind of cloth they need exactly. Either plant, wool, or silk. I think we can make plant. I know we can potentially make silk with some risk. And wool, I don't think we have access to. In any event, it's going to be kind of a tedious process. We'll try to get it sorted out in the background. But for now, we're going to move on. I'll keep you updated. Well, we've tried to get cloth for Oostooth here, to no avail. Yeah, unfortunately, we can't do it. We tried plant cloth, silk cloth, we have both, but I think they need wool. And yeah, we just can't manage it. And so we kind of have to do what we have to do over here. We're going to start constructing an enclosure around this workshop. Oh, uh, hmm, too late, too late. Um, well, you know, it's not great. She went insane because she couldn't complete her artifact. I don't blame her, but unfortunately, there's not much else we could do. This dwarf is beyond help. So we just have to keep an eye on her. And when she finally passes away, we'll have to get her safely interred in a coffin. Quite a shame right there. But a bit of good news. It looks like Ilral, our armorer, has given birth to another child. Isn't that nice? I guess it's a fair trade. Somewhat anyways. Oh well. Such is life in a dwarven fortress. But life keeps on rolling, doesn't it? Moving along, down here in the tunnels, you can see the undead soldiers that we trapped down there. They're currently moving out. To the west. I believe our siege has come to an end. Which is maybe not the best news, really. They were managed when they were down there. But now I'm thinking we can expect to see another siege at some point, up on the surface. Gonna have to keep those eyes peeled, dwarves. It shouldn't be a problem if it does happen, though. And continuing on, I suppose I've kept you waiting long enough. Down here, far underground, in Scorch Fountain proper, you can see things have advanced quite a bit. Isn't it looking good? Almost all of what I showed you last time is completely dug out now. Yeah, the miners have been very hard at work. The engravers, too, doing one hell of a job. Although that is very, very slow going. This is only the third cluster of bedrooms getting finished right now. And yeah, if we zoom out a bit, you can see the full extent of the fortress so far. So far, we have the 100 bedrooms, the forge area up in the north, this long hallway here, just kind of oval-shaped. It goes underneath right here. We have a barracks area. That's what I decided to put over this end. And then down here in the south, we have a library. These are all semi-tentative designations, but I think it's gonna work out fine. Over here to the west, you can see the dwarves carving out this entry tunnel. Very excited about that. It might be a little hard to make out at the time being, but bear with me. Right here, you can see the walkway that visitors or intruders will use to get into the fortress. And then next to the walkway, we have a channel, which is currently 1Z level deep, but I think we're gonna make it a little bit deeper even, so that this walkway kind of has a, you know, a big trench on the side of it. On the inner bends of these arching walkways, you can see another narrow tunnel that is to be dug out behind this wall. And I'm hoping to station some archers in there, so that when invaders come, they can shoot through fortifications carved into these walls and access invaders all through this hallway. I think that should work out pretty darn well, actually. It is hard to say how successful it will be against undead, but I suppose time will tell. I'm feeling pretty positive about it, though. There's no reason to doubt it quite yet. Still on the subject of defense, we still don't have any warriors in the fortress. I'm sure you're acutely aware, as am I. The dwarves we have right now are pretty skilled at their crafts. So, you know, if we got some new dwarves in here who maybe weren't so good at their labors, we could enlist them in the military. But yeah, I mean, we haven't had any yet. Kind of a shame, really. Currently is the first of Sandstone 1166, mid-autumn. We're already approaching the end of the year. It's a quick one. It's a real quick one, actually. And so, yeah, I'm not sure if we can even expect to see any migrants this year. A real shame. But keeping hopes up, we'll get them eventually, I'm sure. And when we do, I'm hoping to have full suits of Masterwork Copper armor ready for them. Yes, Copper. It's the best we could do right now, especially since we haven't been able to trade. And you know what? To hell with the naysayers. I think it's going to do absolutely fine. Time will tell. But again, keeping positive. We have Ilral down here working on some gauntlets currently. And that is coming along very swimmingly. Yeah, man, would you look at this? Popping out masterpieces left and right. She is one hell of an armorer. Definitely a real asset here. All right, you know what? I'm going to say Ilral has earned herself a nickname. Such a hard-working dwarf. I can imagine a dwarf calling someone like her, um... Hmm, well, first, couldn't have a look in her mindset. 
She's always in love with somebody and easily develops positive feelings, a strengthening after becoming a parent. She also forms strong emotional bonds with others, at times to her detriment. Okay, so she's a bit loving, slightly cowardly. She likes to brawl, though dislikes the adoration of fighting as an art to be refined. Huh, here she is making weapons of war. Oh, there it is. She commonly winks as a form of greeting. Ilral's nickname is Winx. Keep on keeping on, Winx. You're doing some damn fine work down here. Oh, back up here in the anvil, we could see poor Oostooth, that strange mood dwarf. She has passed away, just laying in this hallway now, hoping somebody takes care of her body. In a hurry, too, and actually you'll notice right here that we have a few new migrants. Just arrived, thankfully. Was pretty concerned we might not have any new ones this year, but here we are. Oh, and would you look at that? Two of the new arrivals are a doctor and a surgeon. Huh. Mm, Fisher, you're fine. You are our chief medical dwarf, and these two are going to be the first dwarves of our military. And so we're going to form a new squad. We'll start with the uniform. This will be the Bow Dwarf uniform. It will get them hooked up with copper armor and copper bows. For the time being, I'm just going to let them pick whatever armor they choose. My only fear being that they'll take non-masterwork armor, which would kind of stink. But we're managing it pretty well right now. If I start seeing these dwarves taking any other type of armor, then we'll figure something out. But for now, this is fine. All right, now we'll set up a new squad. The Diamond Domination, eh? Hmm, not going to cut it. I guess we better figure out who's going to lead this squad. And of these two doctors, we have Meng and Obak. Meng does not like war, but Obak does like war. He's not a skilled warrior at all, but I think he's got the makings of greatness. Well, he's a muscular fella straight off the bat, that's obvious, but having a deeper look into his mind, he personally finds a friendship burdensome and sees war as a useful means to an end. Excellent. He's fairly rude, yet slow to anger, likes it when people live harmoniously, is often cheerful, seems like a decent dwarf, tough. Uh, he likes the color blue. Okay, I think we're going to have a rather toned down name for this squad. We're going to go with the Blue Bows. Because yes, remember, this squad is going to be armed with bows and arrows. And there we are. We have our two dwarves. Excellent. Oh, and right, can't forget to make sure they're equipped with arrows, not bolts. They're all sad, though. Ugh, damn. Sounds like we have something going on outside. And indeed we do. The dead walk. Hide while you still can. Damn it. Yeah, it looks like the undead have returned with a very similar siege as that last one. Bunch of scattered, armed human zombies. What a pain. I wish we knew who was sending these. I really want to build up a military and send them after some of the local necromancers so we can deal with these bastards. In time. In time. Can't go getting ahead of ourselves. All right, dwarves, once again. To the anvil, let's go. Do not tarry. Let's go, everyone to the anvil. Wow, look at those beetles. Jumped right to it. <laughs> As for the zombies, here they come, moving in, right across the edge of the forge. Don't trip, rotten bastards. All right, how we doing? We all in? Locking it up. Done deal. Okay, we're good. Once again, no problems. As such, we can turn off the burrow and allow the dwarves to get back to work. Get to it, dwarves. Well, once again, we're not too, too terribly affected in here. There are some minor concerns. Like, I want to make sure that beetles have enough food in here. There are a lot more of them now, and we don't have much area for them to graze in. But we'll get it sorted out in the background. Nothing to worry about, really. Yet. Having a little look here, you can see most of the undead have already migrated down to the caverns. <laughs> Stupid bastards. They must be pretty darn bloodthirsty. That's gotta be what's going on. Though that being said, this time we have a few left up on the surface. And these ones seem fairly stubborn. Just kind of milling about, they were chasing around some capybara earlier, and now they don't seem to have any interest in going down there. At all. Which means we're stuck in the anvil. A darn shame, I thought we were going to luck out again. Oh well, not a biggie. Well, let's have a look here. Currently the 17th of Opal, 1166, midwinter. The year is approaching its end. Some of the dwarves are far down below right now. Still working on the new fortress. Nothing too exciting is going to be going on for a while, I hope. And so I think we should take this chance to tell some stories. What do you think? Sounds like a good plan to me. Now then. I had mentioned quite some time ago about our horn beetles. Of the three great dwarven nations, the Abbey of Proliferation cherishes its horn beetles the most. And for good reason, too, I'd say. You see, the dwarves of Orid Ashi are known for their greed. And occasionally it's gotten us into quite a lot of trouble. Take our nasty western cousins, for example, the dwarves of the Fresh Theater, under the banner of the Forgotten Beasts. All know well the tale of Sound Silver and how the dwarves there dug too deep and far too greedily. 
It was a cause of great trouble for those dwarves back in 393. Legend says that those dwarves discovered a rare metal far down in the lowest of caverns. This shining blue-tinted metal was nigh invincible and could be used to form the sharpest of blades. But the price of such a prize was a dear one indeed, and would be paid in dwarven blood. One day while mining, the dwarves of Sound Silver broke into a dark and mysterious cavern, unlike any ever seen. And from this cavern came the three-eyed demon, Ustab Grizzly Perfect, the Profane. This dark creature burst forth and took control of Sound Silver with the help of his squealing hordes of goblins. Many hundreds died in the following days. It was a swift and brutal end for Sound Silver. The folly of the dwarves there plain to see. Those events now stand as a stark reminder of the danger of avarice. But this is not the first time such events have occurred here in the universes of wonder. Unfortunately, our cousins in the north, the dwarves of the Glad Boulder, tell a very similar tale, one from almost 200 years prior. They too dug too deep and discovered there the bluish metal, and they too were foolishly greedy. At their fortress of walled gear, they released a three-eyed demon. Its name was Thalatho Renowned Saviors, the Pulpy Strap, and it too brought with it a dark army, an army that conquered walled gear. Many more souls were lost in this attack, and yet the dwarves still did not learn their lesson. We are a stubborn sort to be sure, greedy to a fault. What can I say? But my friends, it was neither the bloodthirsty dwarves of the Fresh Theater or the far too haughty dwarves of the Glad Boulder to set such events into motion. No, you see, such things have happened before. To us, the dwarves of the Abbey of Proliferation. More than 100 years before the folly of the Glad Boulder, in the late winter of 75, we made the discovery of the blue metal, and we were the greedy ones who dug far too deep. We were the first to know the wrath of the three-eyed fiend. We were the first to see those squealing hordes. And though the price of our foolishness was paid dearly, we fought. And only due to our friend, our greatest ally, did we win. In the late winter of 75, the three-eyed fiend Fava Silken Sports the Whirling Stance was struck down by a horn beetle in many palace. Of all the great dwarven civilizations, we were the only ones capable of such a feat, but it's something that could not have been possible without our dearest friends, our greatest allies, the horn beetles. And so, to this day, we tend our horn beetle herds very lovingly, for these great, noble beasts deserve our utmost respect. Or at least we certainly tried to. You can see right here, these horn beetles aren't particularly happy, and I could not blame them. We can't grow enough moss in the anvil to sustain all of them. I really don't want to have to start slaughtering them. Our herd was only just starting to come into its own. I, I think we haven't figured out, though. It is just kind of tedious work for the time being, though. We'll just keep letting those dwarfs work at it. Anyways, back to our legend. That one there was known as the Horn Beetle and the Three-Eyed Fiend, a popular tale amongst our people. There really is a lot more to it. The eyes of the fiend symbolizing the three dwarven nations. Then there's also the fact that a dragon was able to move into one of those demon-controlled fortresses and wipe everything out. Another interesting bit, definitely. Oh, then of course there's also the matter of, well, we didn't actually reclaim our fortress that we lost those many, many hundreds of years ago. Yeah. To this day, that fortress, many palace, and actually a pretty sizable swath of our territory is still controlled by the hate of dominating. So, I mean, really, when you get down to it, it's a glorious tale, but it might be a little overstuffed. One of our beloved horn beetles killed that demon, but unfortunately the goblins remained, and it seemed to have thrived when you get down to it. That's why we have our fortress here, Scorch Fountain. From here, one day we will retake our lands. My, how time flies. It's already the 10th of granite of 1167, early spring of our fourth year. And here we are still stuck inside the anvil. It's not all bad though. Those dwarves are hard at work underneath and we are getting a lot done while we're up here though and discussing our legends. You know what? I think I'd like to get to know these dwarves just a little bit better. No one in particular, but I think we can get to know these dwarves a little bit better if we have a look at their cuisine and what they've been drinking. Might be interesting. Well, you can see our food stockpile right here. Dwarves constantly in and out, drinking, eating. A lot of really thirsty dwarves. They're so far underground at this point, it takes a while to get all the way back up here. Won't be a problem in the future though, certainly. We'll get everything a bit more centralized. Anyways, 
Yeah, let's see what they got in here. We'll just wait for someone to grab something to eat. Here we are. Oh, go figure. Beetle baby. Sitting here having a nice meal. Just a single plump helmet mushroom. A very simple meal. We actually don't have anybody cooking meals yet, which is kind of a shame. But we haven't had the dwarves to spare quite yet. Soon enough, though. Soon enough. As you were, Beetle Baby. Let's see if we can get somebody else in here. Ah, here we are. We can see Thob, our broker, eating something. And that is a long yam plant. Ooh, delicious. Again, it's a shame we can't cook these things up. Yeah, we've been living kind of a crude existence when you come down to it. But look forward to the future, dwarves. Soon enough, we'll have the finest of dwarven cuisine here in the fortress. How about our drinks? There has to be something good to drink around here anyways. Oh, here we go. In the stockpile here, we have a barrel of radish wine. That is something special right there. Got that nice spice to it. A unique flavor to be sure. Really gets you going. Oh, then of course we have barrels just stuffed with plants and vegetables. All sorts of stuff. When we were able to go out on the surface, we had a bunch of dwarves out gathering. Which is why we have so many plants right now. We are doing some farming too, of course, when we can. Yes, it's a fairly varied diet. Just an unrefined diet. Gets the job done. We're surviving. Anyways, I'd say it's enough horsing around up here in the anvil. Time to go check on the dwarves' work. Well, first up, heading down here, you can see our two doctors slash bow dwarves. They were just shooting off some arrows, fully clad in their masterwork copper armor and wielding their masterwork copper bows. Isn't that something? Starting to get some skill already. That is something I really like to see. And I'm sure soon enough, they'll be more than capable of defending our fortress. We will need a few more of them first, though, just to be safe. Back down on this level here, you'll notice the lack of horn beetles. Yes, that's right. There are no horn beetles left on this layer. And that is because they're all down here. In the second cavern layer, we've made a nice enclosure for them. Completely safe, no worries at all. There's more than enough food in here for every single one of these beautiful beetles. But that being said, you can see they are getting rid of a lot of this moss. We will have to make some more pastures like this eventually, I think. But won't be a problem. If you have a look over this way in the west, you'll see a ramp leading downwards that connects up to this tunnel right here. Yes, we actually made a series of tunnels branching away from that main fortress area underground that lead down to the different cavern layers just to give us some access in the future, you know? I just now realized there were no doors down here. What an idiot. Anything could have run in. <laughs> oh my. Up over this way, we have a bit of a water project going on. More on that in the future, though. Access to the first cavern layer, not going out there, of course. And moving up just a little bit farther, you can see the entirety of Scorch Fountain proper. All carved out now, and the engravers are doing a fine job at smoothing. They nearly have 70 of the bedrooms completely smooth now. So yeah, looking, looking pretty good. Up in the north over here, you can see our meeting hall. That's where this is going to be. And as far as new additions go, that's pretty much it. Still gotta figure out where we're gonna put some more bedrooms, a hundred more bedrooms. Temples, that's going to be a big problem. That might just have to go on a different layer, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's really coming together. And you know what? Back up here in the anvil, we're just about to try a little something. Let's see how this goes. Okay, dwarves are heading outside. A few dwarves. And I would dearly like to think that one of them is coming down this way here to block up this stairway. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. Bomrek. That poor fellow who's caught in all those cave-ins there. Ah, wonderful. That's right. I've been keeping an eye poked outside here, and it does look like finally all those undead have moved down underground. Real thankful for that, certainly. And yes, dwarves, it looks like the surface is ours once more. Woo, great news. It does make me think we should start securing this mountaintop, though. I hate getting locked up inside like that. It might end up being a yearly thing if we don't do something about it, and that'd be pretty annoying. No time like the present, I suppose. Might as well get started. It's going to be a big job to properly defend this volcano. Hoping it doesn't take too long, but... It's got to get done. Yeah, we'll just take some time doing this. I know we haven't been exposed to the sun in quite some time, dwarves, but try not to let that upset you too much. We have to focus on the task at hand. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of distracted dwarves, actually. Not an excellent thing. Don't suppose I can fully blame them, though. They have had a lot on their plates recently. We really have to get some more temples made, and some downtime might be nice as well. Hmm. I know it probably hasn't seemed like a lot of time has passed, but right now it's the 25th of Timber, 1167, late autumn of our fourth year. So yeah, a considerable amount of time has passed, really. And we're now coming up on our fifth year, really something. But we've had a lot of tedious work to attend to, hence the number of upset dwarves, I imagine. Yeah, we'll have to remedy that. Next year, dwarves, we'll just really work hard this year, try to get these defenses up, and then we'll set up some nice temples for you guys. Maybe we should get our new meeting hall built. That'd be really nice. Oh, and speaking of which, the engravers are just putting the finishing touches on the last of our bedrooms. Wonderful. Soon we'll have 100 fancy dwarven bedrooms completely done. Hmm, just what I love to see. 
and I'll get that new meeting hall smoothed up, and you dwarves will be primed for relaxation. You deserve it. Oh, hey now. What is this? It's a migrant wave. Fantastic news. We were at 38 dwarves after that last migrant wave. Let's see how many we're up to now. Hoping for quite a few, actually. We gotta pad out our military a bit. Having a look, and we are up to 46 dwarves now. Not too bad, approaching a quarter of our total population. Get yourselves situated, dwarves. There is a lot of work that's gotta get done before the end of the year. Adding some new dwarves into the blue bows. Up to five now. And it looks like we have a petition for a, hmm, the communion of bothering, a religion. And they require a temple and a priest. Yes, we'll prove this. We were planning on making some temples anyways. Gonna have to remember that. One thing at a time, though. Gotta take care of the needs of the many before the needs of the few. It's only sensible. After we get done with this meeting hall, we'll start work on a temple quarter. That's gonna take a considerable amount of planning, I think. Oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was a bad one right there. We just had a dwarf killed in our temple. Ah, oh, wow. Um, Zahn, the woods dwarf. Carpenter and tree cutter. He's been in a pretty sour mood lately. And just a couple days ago, he threw a tantrum and injured another dwarf. Not severely. Really, it's our first problem like that in this fortress. It's been pretty peaceful overall. We convicted the guy of the crime, and I thought for sure he'd be thrown in our prison, but Obak, our militia commander, beat him. Uh, badly. Killed the guy. A little overboard, I think. Couldn't just finish out this year on a good note, could we? Really, the worst thing is that that is Ilral Wink's husband. You know, our legendary armorsmith with the two children. Well, really hoping that doesn't ruin things around here in terms of mood. I thought we were doing pretty all right. Having a look at the date, it is the 21st of Obsidian 1167, late winter, of our fourth year. The defenses outside are looking pretty darn good, and I think after this event right here, we could really use that rest. And so we're going to get right to it. Look forward to some downtime next year, dwarves, as well as some very intense training. After we have a nice, well-trained and outfitted military, we can finally attack our enemies and fulfill Scorch Fountain's true purpose. Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to the end of the episode, where I talk about some just kind of behind-the-scenes things for a little bit. Now, let's see, what do we got here? Well, first thing I'd like to mention is that I've really been enjoying the whole year-by-year -year thing we've been doing, where, like, the past two episodes have been kind of, like, one year each. We kind of broke that with this episode, but this episode was two years. Like, exactly, so it still kind of works. Just kind of helps, uh, sort things out a little bit better, I'd say. I've never really done a fort like that before. It's interesting. Another thing I'd like to mention is those uh, undead hordes that keep attacking us. I personally do not know where they come from. Like, I haven't picked around in Legends mode or anything like that. And that's only because, like, I can't really see... Um, well, like, if goblins were to attack us, then you could see the emblem from their civilization on their armor sometimes. And so, like, I don't know, I feel like I can go check it out at that point. Like, since I know where they came from, then the dwarves at the fortress probably know something about that goblin civilization, right? But these undead here are just some random undead. Nothing about them can tell me where they came from exactly, I don't think. And I'm fine with that. I'm just assuming they're coming from some local necromancer. There are a ton of towers around us, remember? I can't wait to start attacking them, by the way. It should get pretty interesting. You see all this fan artwork in the background, by the way? Isn't that stuff just stellar? Goddamn mind-blowing. There are some real skilled people out there, and I really appreciate all of you artists out there sending in your artwork so that I can see it, and so that all you bearded bastards out there can see it too. I know you all appreciate it just as much as I do. A reminder, if you want to see your artwork here in the background, you can send it to adam at krugsmash.com. That should do the trick. Anyways, that pretty much wraps it up. Um, Actually, there's one last little bit here. I have said in the past, and I don't really think some people believe me, that I am very bad at speaking a lot of the time. I will admit, I've got a pretty decent sounding voice, but I'm not good at speaking. I'm not. And just as an example here, this is how many times I had to try to say this one sentence here. And this is extremely common. Take a listen. Now we'll get that. Now we'll get the. Now we'll get the new meeting hall smoothed up. Now we'll get that. Now we'll get that new. Hmm. Now we'll get the. Hmm. Now we'll get that new meeting hall smoothed up, and you dwarves will be primed for relaxation. Yeah, wasn't that terrible? Also, a good time to remind anybody out there who wants to make YouTube videos that a little editing can go a long, long way. Take it from me. Anyways, I think that's gonna about do it. My bearded bastards, once again, I thank you from the very bottom of my heart for watching. It means the world to me. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, and I certainly hope to see you next time here in Athlest Zafan, Scorch Fountain. And until then, my bearded bastards.